I mean, it was really just a full breakdown, you know, everything you need to learn, basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems and programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. What's up, guys? Happy Friday. Welcome to the Deal Desk, episode 94. We're almost at 100. I got to do something crazy for 100, but um, welcome. First time, welcome the way this works. You submit your leads uh, at the ritoolbox.com. Okay, it doesn't matter where they are, East Coast, West Coast, wherever. I'm going to make uh, sure I call them live, and you get to see the good, the bad, the ugly. That's the beautiful thing about these live calls. So, um Let's get right to it. So this first one here, it looks like it's in Texas. Um, let me see here. I'm actually going to pull this up. The house is not on Zillow. It's on some other website here. And it actually looks like it's in great shape. There's actually some, um, some really good photos of the property. <clears throat> now, just because a property is in good shape doesn't mean that it's not a deal. You know, most of the time you'll talk to people that um, have a property they want to sell um, that may be in good shape. And typically, if that's the case, they're not going to be too motivated to sell at a at a discount. Um, just depends on what their situation is, but don't judge them just because it's a nice house and needs no work but keep that in mind people that have properties that are in really good shape literally whether they're new or renovated or whatnot uh they're gonna be more interested in getting a higher purchase uh higher price all right so i'm gonna share this here all right so this is the property all right uh let's see here so you put here roof needs replacements, um, paint outside, inside, outside, plumbing issues, and landscaping. Okay. Fair condition, three, two and a half, two car, garage attached. Reason for selling. She's looking to downsize, so needs money from sale to buy another. Okay, perfect. So let's give them a call. I'm going to put it on speaker here. And um, we'll see what happens. Let's see. What's her name? Okay. 915. Blank, blank, blank. Blank, 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 blank. Let's put on speaker. Hmm. Let me try calling this again. Won't even ring or anything. There we go. I think I got it here. <clears throat> Let's see if they pick up the phone. Hi, I'm Tina. Please leave a message. Oh. She didn't pick up. I'm going to call one more time. How much is she asking for this? Did not say. Remember, guys, when they don't tell you price, what that really means is I don't want to tell you how much I want to sell it for. People always know how much they want, but they will never know how much it's worth. Some, some might. Most won't. But usually every seller you talk to, they're not going to want to tell you how much they want. Why would they tell you that? You know? Hi, I'm Tina. Please leave a message. All right, so it's going to voicemail. So we're going to move on to the next one. The next one 
is in Palm Coast, Florida. Palm Coast, Florida. All right. So this one. Sometimes on the street view, it'll actually blank out uh, the property. All right. So this one in Palm Coast. Um, they're asking $380,000. What repairs are needed? Modernize kitchen, replace carpets, redo vanity in um, master bathroom. Can't really see the house. Let me go ahead and share it. Show you what I'm looking at. All right. So this is the house. Let me see if I could scoot over to the left. There we go. Eh, you can kind of see it. All right, cool. So they're asking 380, fair condition, double lot property, four bedroom, three bath, approximately 2,700 square feet, AC four and a half years old, hot water heater, two years old. Reason for selling, looking to sell and downsize. It's just herself and her grandkids in the house now, and they're moving away. She's looking to move either to Fort Lauderdale or Vero Beach closer to family. Okay, cool. So let's give her a call. I have no way, I have no idea how to pronounce um, that last name, but I'll just, you know, I'll address her by her first name. So let's give this person a call. All right, let's see if they pick up. I'm going to start running comps here. This number is using RoboKiller to screen their call. Mm. Please say your name and the purpose of your call, and I'll try to connect you. Steven, in regards to your property on Rally Drive. Hmm. I guess it's screening the call. Some people will have stuff like that. Kind of like Google Voice will ask you sometimes to... State your name before they connect, all that stuff. Um, I don't know how this one works, though. But, you know, whether it's this getting screened, a voicemail, a text, you got to keep in mind, you don't want to overdo it. So, like, if I'm texting somebody or you're leaving a voicemail or doing this little robo killer thing, you don't say, Hey, Bob, this is Steven. I was calling in regards to your property on 123. I'd like to give you a cash offer if you're available. Please give me – like you don't want to do too much. You know, if it's your first time talking to the person, I'm going to hang up and try them again. If it's the first time you're talking to somebody, you have to um, get their interest or curiosity. you got to say, hey, Bob, um, I'm calling in regards to your property. Or, hey, Bob, my name is Steven. I'm calling in regards to your property on 123 Main Street. Right. So when you tell them that they're going to be um, more curious as to who you are and what are you calling me about my property? OK. Really important that you do that. You don't want to overdo information on voicemail, text. Um, that's just my opinion. What works for me. All right. Let's try calling this person again. See if uh, her robo killer goes through. <clears throat> Mm, all right. There we go. Hi. This number is using RoboKiller to screen their calls. Please say your name and the purpose of your call, and I'll try to connect you. My name's Stephen. I'm calling in regards to your property on Raleigh Drive. So how's this thing work? I guess it goes to her. She hears me. I don't know if it gets to her immediately, if it rings. You know, basically just making sure that I, I'm a human, which I'm pretty sure I am a human. So let's hang up on her. Let's uh, let's move on to the next one. All right. We're going New Jersey. New Jersey. One of my favorite markets here. On the deal desk is New Jersey because we get all kinds of uh, 
interesting conversations if they pick up the phone, though. So let's try calling this person. Oh, before I call this person, I wanted to let you guys know um, this one here on Palm Coast. I noticed you put in the notes, it has a double lot. Now, some of you guys may know this, some of you may not. I've done this strategy. It works for me. If the homeowner has a property on a double lot, all right, and you can subdivide it. Look at the zoning. Make sure you can put two houses on it. Your MAO increases. So, for example, um, I like to keep things simple. So let's say your max offer on the house is 150 okay, because you see cash comp sum for 160 right? Your MA on the house is 150. If you're looking at lots, okay, and let's say they're selling for, I don't know, $50,000 to cash buyers, all right, that means your MAO for that lot alone be $40,000 because then you can sell for $50,000. So your MAO will actually increase to $190,000 if you're looking to get both of them together, okay? Keep that in mind. A lot of people leave money on the table when it comes to those kinds of deals, you do have to look at the zoning, the size of the lot. Some zoning um, codes will only allow you to put one house per frontage. Get familiar with zoning codes in your city. But your offer actually increases uh, based on can you build a new house on here or lot selling in the area. Look at new construction. Look at the transaction history. Look at vacant land being sold. What are they selling for? Who's buying the land? Your offer can actually go up. So that'll actually give you a competitive advantage over other investors too. Anyways, back to this one in New Jersey. It doesn't have a street view. I see the Zillow photos here, but I'm trying to keep your lease confidential. As a matter of fact, let me see if I could just uh, zoom in a little bit to cover the address. Okay, I think that'll work. All right, cool. So this one's in, uh, it says light cosmetic work. Fair condition, two-family house. All right, let me show you what I'm looking at. So properties in the Northeast, remember, um, most of these are row homes, okay? So when you're looking at row homes, you have to take into consideration basements, how many floors. Um, you know, there is opportunity in these kind of markets. A lot of people say that these markets are competitive, that it's hard to do deals here. Listen. It doesn't matter where the market is. You can get deals anywhere, okay? It's real estate, so don't be afraid uh, if it's a competitive market. If, the, if there's competition, guys, there's demand. You want to go to an area where there's demand. There's money to be made in those kind of markets, all right? So don't ever be afraid. All right, cool. So um, this is the property here. Okay, so uh, light cosmetic rehab, two-family house, four and a half bedroom, tenants paying 2K a month. Tenants are not – reason for selling. Where's my little notepad at? It's okay. Um, tenants are not paying. Let me get my notepad because I do want to write this stuff down when I talk to people. Now, typically, if I'm calling like my leads, I put them in the camera stuff, but – on the deal desk, I just write down notes uh, as I talk to the person. Okay, so the per the tenants are not paying. That results in usually really mo uh, really motivated sellers. Tenants don't pay; they don't make money. It's costing them money. Okay, so tenants aren't paying. Um, I see some more information here. Tenants are not paying. Looking to sell at a discount to not deal with courts. Once courts open, he will reconsider selling. Hold on a second. Tenor's been looking to sell at a discount to not deal with courts. Once courts open, he will reconsider selling. I don't – that doesn't – hold on. That doesn't really make sense. So is he not looking to sell until the courts open, or is he really just looking to sell at a discount to not deal with the courts? We have to press on the pain point. So when people tell you why they want to sell – their motivation is they don't want to deal with the tenants. They don't want to deal with the courts. Guess what? That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We have to bring a solution to the problem. So if we get this person on the phone, we will press on that pain point to paint the picture, if that makes sense. 
Now, some of these markets in the Northeast have different laws. For example, when I was doing deals in D.C., they would have this law called Topa Law, where basically the tenants have the first right of refusal, whether they can buy the property or not. So that means if I'm buying a property with a tenant, whether the tenant can afford or not, they can say, hey, I want to buy this house. Then it has to go through a whole process. Now, when you're dealing with difficult tenants, especially ones that are not paying, no matter what market it is, no matter what laws it is, try and negotiate something with the tenants. Okay. Sometimes people will leave if you pay them a few bucks. You know, make sure it's a healthy spread where it makes sense because that's an additional expense uh, when you have to pay more money, obviously. All right. So let's give this person a call. Let's give him a call and see see what we got going on here. Um, tenants are not paying. All right, so let's see. New Jersey, 973, blank, 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 blank. By the way, um, at 1 o'clock, if you guys follow me on IG, I'm going to be going live on IG at 1 o'clock. Um, I'm going to be dropping some good stuff, and I'm also making a special announcement. So make sure, set your alarm, notifications. I'm going to be going live at 1 o'clock right after the show, 1 p.m. EST, okay? All right, so let's call this gentleman, see uh, where they're at at this property. Oh, this is uh, semi-detached. That's even Hello. better. Hello, Mr. Juan. Yes, sir. My name is Steven. You spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on uh, Winthrop Street. Were you still looking to sell? Well, um, maybe a house. Of course. That's what I'm here for. D did I catch you at a good time? Yes, yeah, it's cool. I'm home today, so. Oh, perfect. Great, great. So uh, my name is Steven, by the way. I, I want to call you and see what I can do to for you. So my process is actually very simple. Um, I just want to ask you a few more questions about the property other than what I see here on the notes. And then what I'll do is I'll go and evaluate the area right here in the computer to see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, perfect. And Juan, just to let you know, um, you know, we're a real estate investment company, so we don't buy every property we look at. If I'm not a good fit, I'm not going to drag you along and waste your time. I'll let you know up front that I'm not a good fit, and uh, we have an amazing team of real estate agents just in case, okay? No problem. All right, perfect. So I'm looking here in the notes. Um, when you spoke with my partner, it's a two-family house, four-and-a-half-bedroom, uh, two-bathroom all together. Um, tenants paying 2 k a month, but it says here this, that they're they're not paying now. Is that the case? Not big, yeah, they're not no, they're not paying. I'm going to the process now, actually, for Ooh. the eviction thing. But it's just taking a little longer. I guess there's too many evictions going on in the extra county area right now. So. You said you have a lot of evictions going on? No, I said Excess County has too many evictions going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Now, so maybe it take it longer than it's supposed to. But I'm in the process of it right now. So. Okay. And as far as um the condition, I see it says it says uh need some light cosmetic work. Can you tell me a little bit more about you know the um, bathroom the kitchen? Floor, the, the the second floor is everything is new. The first floor, the bathrooms are new. Uh, you, you kitchen, the floor, and the Say say that last part again. I said the the second floor is pretty much. Is in fact the first, the second floor is in great shape. Okay. In great shape. Downstairs are the bathrooms are modern. The kitchen needs to be, you know, need cabinets, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. All right, perfect. And um what about the electric and plumbing? Any issues with that at all? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. And how long has it been since the tenants last paid? I'm pressing on the paint. Sure, like eight months ago. Eight, nine months ago. Eight months? Yeah. yeah that's a long time. Um, yeah, man. I'm paying the train fees and everything, and it's still like, you know, I call the county every week, and they just say, oh, we're just waiting, we're waiting. What so, are they waiting on? Yeah, that's, you know what I mean? They're saying they have a long list. 
Oh, that's crazy. I'm sorry to I hear that. I'm not trying to do this. I'm glad they're not doing their job. Yeah. This does this have an uh? What's that? I said the property will pay way more than that. The reason they were just paying two thousand because that's how much I used to owe for the hard money people before I cast it out. Yeah. So. Okay. And then you know, Corona came in, and then they, you know, everybody got in the mango of not paying rent. You know how that. You know how that. Yeah, you that's, know that's, scenario, that's so. a mess. Um, you know, what kind of time frame, more or less, were you looking at about? Not like a week, a month, a couple months? Hey, listen, if I go through, if I finish the process, I won't, you know, I will sell the house for way more money than what it's, you know, than a lot of my money because the house is worth a pretty good penny. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But right now, since the process is, is going on, it could take one month, it could take three months, it could probably could take six months. Who knows how long it's going to yeah. take? Yeah. So. You know, I'm willing to take an offer. If it's reasonable to me, then, you know, we take it from there. Yeah. Now, um, my partner here said the that... Attorney, um, the, the attorney's already paid for. Everything, the what? You know, everything submitted. I said my attorney's already paid for. Okay. For the eviction. Everything else. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's already so, paid for. So what did you think the property's worth or what we're we looking to at least sell it for in the current situation you're in? Well, in the current situation, mm -hmm. I would take like three ninety. A cash deal. You three ninety. I, I could send you some pictures. I think I believe I have some pictures in my file. Send you the pictures, and you know, you take it from there. Okay, because it looks like last time, unless this is a typo, my partner here said you're looking to get around two fifty. No, I pay more than that for the property. You can look at your records. If you want title, you'll see how much I pay for the property. Yeah, I see you paid 109, right? Uh -uh. No. <laughs> Hold on a second. Over. Hold on a second. I want to make sure I'm looking yeah. at the right I one. It. I owed it on the property. I think was more, I was supposed to be 180 when, you're, when, you're, um, when I spoke to your partner, I believe it was. I think you may have put the wrong address over some of the sleep. I am looking at the right? the right property. Well, so, okay, give me 250 at least I can take my money out that I already... You know, I'm going to confirm the address, the so I'm going to put it on and notes. I stay with the money that I invested in the property. Well, to make a long story short, when I did, went to go pay for the property, I'm to take out a full closure, it was like 198000 for the mm. property, more than what I already had put in there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, you know, I finished paying for it. I saved another deal, so I got, you know, I took care of the note, so... Okay. I'm not in that shape that I was before. Which, you know which house are you referring to? Just to make sure I have the right one. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Just all right. So you're looking to get 390. Oh, man, I, I mean, I think that's more or less what's selling full market value. Um, is this that something that what's that, that property with this with a that property with a few? Like listen. If I'm be able to take the people out, I would sell that property 480, 475 without no problem. Of course, a little cosmetic needs to be done to it. You know what I mean? It's unrealistic. Yeah, so um, is this something that you're open to? Because I could probably pay more if you take payments, maybe like a down payment and monthly installments. Is that something you may be open to or are you just looking for a cash offer? Yeah, I'm looking for cash off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we'd be too far apart. Have you considered listing the property with an agent? No, to be honest, I've never done that. I never, you know, it's too much headache with that, to be honest with you. Plus, yeah. like I told you, I'm going through a final with a tenant. They're not trying to open the door in time. You know, it's too much, too much headache. And that's the reason I'm giving you that property. That property costs with 500000 probably more in the everyday it is in. You, you should do the cops. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. I mean, I see 380, 325, one 450. Family, not, a, not, a, not a two family. <clears throat> Let me see. Oh, that's right. Yours is a two family, but that's what it's bringing up. Four bedroom, two two bathrooms that shows on the tax records. Four, is that? Four, four, four and a half bedrooms. Four and a half. Okay. Yeah, and the base, and the basement is almost finished. The basement just needs a bathroom. I got four bedrooms down. Finished basement, okay. Yeah, almost finished basement, almost. Almost finished. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, I see some. Well, 
I see some two families on the other side of Mill Street, but that's a little it's a little far. Um, three sixty two. Are you familiar with Van Rensselaer Street? No, I'm not really. I'm not really familiar with that area. No. It's just uh four blocks north, twenty five Van Rensselaer Street. Two families sold for three sixty two. Um, yeah, I think three ninety. I mean, if if I could cover closing costs, fees, commissions, I can close whenever you like, and I can kind of pick up where you left off with your situation. What do you think would be the best price you can do? Okay, look, this is what I would do to you. This is what I would do. Okay. Okay. Right, I have fifty one Irving Street, right? Okay. I got 51 Urban Street right around the corner from there, and I have 179 Hansberry Avenue. That's in the, that's in, in the other part of North. Okay. I will give you the three properties and 51 Urban Street's any bathroom and the kitchen I already paid for, which they're supposed to do any minute now. They still need a little cosmetic. It's a one family with a finished basement. Okay. Um, I will give you. All three properties for nine hundred thousand cash. You said Irvin Street's vacant. No, vacant. No, they pay rent. They pay their okay. rent there. And what about one seventy nine? They pay rent as well. Okay, so they're both tenant occupied. Yeah, they all pay for it. the properties. Are all pay for. I don't have no money on it. All right. I mean, but I'm trying to move to something bigger. And you're looking for a cash offer for all three. You wouldn't be open to taking payments. No, no, I would like a cash offer. So okay. like that, I could be able to, you know, continue what I'm trying to do. Of course, of course. Are you looking to like 1031 exchange it, or are you just looking to cash out? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, I'm not saying that I'm not in, in the thing, but I'm willing to invest the money in a, you know, in a bigger property. Got it. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Are you? Do you actively buy properties in the area? I actually do. Okay. But, you know, this market is crazy right now. So yeah. It's too high right now. Yeah, it's going. It's, it's a very interesting shift. Well, here's what I'll do because I got to look at more than one. I'm going to look at these other two addresses you looked at. I'll review with my partner, and then I'll call you back more or less at a range that makes sense. If, if you like it, great. If not, no big deal. I'm sure we can do business otherwise as well. But let me uh, crunch the numbers with, with these other ones. We'll get back to you, okay? No problem. Thank you I'm so welcome. much. You have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, you know, I haven't taken a look at these uh, other ones. I mean, I mean, he wants 390, right? So I'm looking at the comps. Now, the thing is, um, I mean, 390, you know, double family, technically duplex. I mean, there's not really much here. There's some across the street, well, a few blocks north. And I see one for 362. I see one for 415. Okay. And these one, I see one that's for 560, but that's not, this one's not comparable really. So I have 362, 415. He's asking 390. And then when I asked him if I can do this, this, and this, and close the time frame that works best for you and pick up where you left off on your current situation, what do you think would be the best price you can do? He brought the other two properties up. He said he wants nine hundred thousand for all of them. Uh, is that a deal or not? I don't know. I'm assuming that you know this guy wants what? He wants nine hundred thousand for all three. Okay, he wants three hundred ninety thousand for one. These two properties, he's assuming is probably worth two fifty five k in its current condition. Um, there's one right around the corner that he wanted me to take a look at. So anytime you get somebody that has multiple properties that um, they want to sell, do not make the mistake of running, trying to run comps on all of them. So I call these whales, people that have more than one property that they're interested in selling. I call them whales because you can either buy them all together buy one at a time, create an amazing experience for the homeowner. And then now you have a lineup of the, of other deals lined up, right? A whale is what we call it. But if they say, Hey, I got this one, I got this one. 
this is where, you know, in acquisitions, you can't, you don't want to jump. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me look at it real quick. Let me come up. There's no way. Well, you can, but if you try to give an offer too quickly and more than one property, you know, you want to make it seem like it's difficult for you. Like, it's not really difficult. I could take the time and do it while he's on the phone, but I want to sound hesitant. If I sound hesitant, I don't sound thirsty. If you sound thirsty to a homeowner, man, I need these properties. I need these deals. The person's going to be like, whoa, I don't know if I want to do business with this guy. He's all over me. Okay. So I write down the addresses of the other properties. I take my time to run comps on those. I come up with an MAO for each one. He sounds negotiable. I think he's negotiable. I don't know if he's willing to... I mean, the first place he wanted to sell because the tenants weren't paying. The court system is dragging along. So, you know, there's definitely motivation there. But um, you can't make a quick decision on more than one property in seven minutes. Like, that's not going to happen. And if you try it, you might shoot yourself in the foot technically. Okay? So I'm going to take my time with those other ones. We'll give them a call back. Um, and then we'll see where we're at. I know that 390 is definitely not going to work for that first one. You know, and if somebody's asking too much, guys, ask them about, about creative financing. Is this something that that they're open to taking payments on with a you know decent sized down payment? Is this something that they just want all the cash up front? Some people don't need all the money up front. They don't. In today's market, the way that we're going into this market, creative financing is going to be one of the most profitable strategies. For various reasons. Okay. So keep that in mind. Creative finances are always sexy deals. Um, and not all homeowners need the money up front. All right. There's a big shift in the market that's already happened. All right. Anyways, um, let's go to the next one. Um, we're going to go to Seminole. Wait, hold on a second. Uh, I think this is a duplicate. Let me make sure. Seminole, Florida. I want to make sure that I'm looking at a property that we haven't called already. All right. Now, if I call them and they don't answer, I don't mind calling them again. But like, you know, some of these I've called, I've had a conversation with and um, or like on season two when I had some guests, they called. It. Yeah. So <laughs> CJ actually called this one. You guys remember when CJ was was calling the older gentleman? Um what? Oh, okay. Usually I see a lot of price cuts on Zillow. I don't really see too many price increases. This guy listed it for $315,000. It says price increase $580. I wonder why. Did he tell the agent, hey, increase the price 500, 500 bucks? How long has this been listed? I'm curious. Oh, this just got listed four days ago. Um, I think overpriced, but I mean... You know, people don't list properties at a price that it, they expect to sell that price. Typically, they price a little higher, expect to get a little lower. I don't really see too many price increases. Also, in your market, um, something that you guys can do. Let me see if I can pull this up here. In your market, sometimes you'll see that this estimate's decreasing, Okay. If that's the case, there's actually a way on Zillow where you can actually pull up a um, – let me go to home value. You pull up – it's not on this one. Maybe it's because – let me see. Oh, a table view. Okay. Ooh-wee. Dang, man. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen because um, this is already listed, so I don't really care. I mean, this is a really old lead. Where am I going? I got three screens here, guys. Give me a second. So um, check this out. This is really, really, this is going to help your negotiation power, and I'll tell you why. So check this out. The Zestimate's 302, okay? Now, you see this little graph where it went all the way up and then a drop like this. I'm seeing this trend in at least Tampa, and I'm sure you're seeing some in your market, there's going to be these little spikes. Almost every person I've talked to, I've seen these little spikes where it spiked in the summer, 
okay? And now it's dropping. Check this out. So we're going to click on this table view here, all right? And look at this. Make sure you guys, I don't know if you can see this well. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. All right, so look at this. May and June, this was at $400,000. And I'm talking about this was rising. Like if I go back, I mean, we're much lower. But look at this, man. This was at $400,000, okay? One, two, three, four months later. I mean, it's basically – this is the Zestimate. you got to take this with a grain of salt. Zestimate isn't always the most accurate thing. It's not an ARV. But we can see here on the graph, you saw the little spike. The price was at its peak in May and June, and it dropped almost 100 grand. This lead has been in this system since season two. I, I think even when CJ called, if this guy would have sold when CJ called him, it probably would have been a higher price. But look at look at this now. On top of that, okay, this is what I was talking about. The price increase, 580. So when you're negotiating with people, remember, sellers are very used to Zillow this, Redfin, Realtor.com. Zillow is pretty easy for them. That's the, usually the number one place to go to first. So say, hey, Bob, do me a favor. Go on your, um, you know, copy and paste or type in your address on Zillow. Scroll down. You look at, see this graph, sir? May or June and July, your property was at its peak. It's declining in price. All the properties are declining price right now. So if anything, right now is the time to sell because next month this could go down $50,000, right? And this is real stuff. I mean, it's not going up anytime soon. Some are plateauing. Some are slowly, you know, adjusting. But this one went whoop, pow, right there like a roller coaster, okay? So this is stuff that's going to help you negotiate with homeowners. When you bring facts to the table, people will listen, okay? This is not just some stuff I'm coming up out of thin air. This is data. This is data here. They could look up. You know, you don't have to be a real estate investor, uh, analyst, smart, whatever. This is here. Somebody could just put in their address and look it up. So it's a great strategy. When you're negotiating with homeowners, okay, keep that in mind. All right, I'm not gonna call this guy. I mean, we we blown this guy up. Um, good old Lenny. So let's move on to the next one. Massachusetts in Salem, just in time for Halloween, right? So let's go over here. Let's call this one. I don't think I've called this one before. Okay. They're asking 500000 sliding, sliding from the house for a condition. All right, cool. Remember, guys, it's not too late. If you want me to call your leads live, you can head over to the reitoolbox.com. And then you click on submit leads to be called live on the deal desk, okay? I call these leads live uh, usually every Friday, okay? Now, this says this sold... Yeah, actually, this sold. This sold in June, so um, kind of late to the party here. We're gonna skip this one. So we're gonna go over to Georgia. Let's see, I see. I noticed that a lot of people submit leads, and um, asking price says did not say. That's okay. I don't need to have an asking price. Now, what I will remind uh, those of you that are a little bit newer to the business. Please, please, please do not submit leads that are listed on the MLS. If it's listed with a real estate agent, you know, do not submit those. We're, we're trying to get off-market stuff here for you guys, okay? And I've locked up multiple deals on this. Uh, I mean, this is freaking episode, what, 94? You can always binge watch the previous ones and see how those went. And it's also great for training. If you guys are newer or maybe you're bringing on somebody to your team, have them watch these shows, okay? It's going to be a great ROI for them. And remember, these are recorded live, so you see the good, you see the bad, you see the ugly. Some of these shows you seem to get yelled at, cussed out, whatever, okay? It's just, it's part of the game. All right, so let's move over to this one in Georgia. Let me see if I could pull this up. 
There's not many notes here, though. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this is in Springfield, Georgia. All right. This one is off market, so it's still available. Okay. So asking price did not say. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath, one-car detached garage. Reason for someone looking to retire elsewhere. All right, cool. It's got a little well on here. Let me go and share my screen. All right, you can't really see the house too well. All right, so let's give them a call. They are looking to retire. You know, when people are looking to retire, um, build some rapport off of that. You know, like, hey, congratulations. You know, what did you used to do? You don't have to get so in-depth. But some people like talking about that new chapter in their life and, you know, where they want to move to and all those things. All right, so let's see if they answer the phone. Hey, this is Don. I'm not able to. Not answering the phone. Let's call one more time. We got the Instagram live in 15 minutes, 1 p.m. EST, 12 p.m. CST. Make sure you guys hop on IG live. I'll be on there with Elijah and Diddy talking some closing stuff. Uh, make sure you tune in. I'm also going to be making a special announcement of something that I'm launching next month, and I'm really excited. All right, but let's call let's call this lady one more time. She doesn't pick up. We're still in Georgia. I'm going to call somebody else in Georgia. <clears throat> hey, this is Don. I'm not. All right. So, probably retire from answering the phone, too. So, let's move on to the next one in Georgia. Uh, there's like no notes on this one. Oh, inherited property. That's all I see here. <laughs> all right. Fair condition inherited property. Usually pro people that inherit a property are uh, typically they're motivated, you know, because especially if they live out of state. If somebody inherited a property to live out of state, they don't want to manage it, deal with it. They just want to get rid of it. Okay. All right. So let's see what we got here. Lavonia, 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 Georgia. No picture. This is out in the middle of nowhere. All right, so uh, let's give them a call. Sometimes I, I call these properties, and they're out in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't have a street. There's just like a, a satellite view, so there's really nothing to look at. <clears throat> All right. Inherited property. She hung up before she even got a chance for me to say hello. All right. Let's call her right back. <laughs> I think she literally just picked up and hung up. Maybe she's sleeping. Maybe she's retired. I don't know. Let's see. Let's call her. Let's call her back. It's interesting. This area code is actually here in Florida, but maybe she lives here in Florida. Don't ever be afraid. Don't ever be afraid to call more than once, guys. Three, five. It went straight to voicemail that time. Got to run a few times. Um. Okay, I just got a voicemail. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. 
Make sure you guys drop any questions. I will be answering questions in a few minutes. I see the chat. There's a lot of stuff going in chat. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, let's call this next one. This is also in Georgia. Then we have some in Florida. We have a few notes on this one. What repairs are needed? Nothing. There's always usually something. I know sellers will always tell you. Most of the time people say this house needs no work, little to no work. It's an excellent condition. You know, and then you may start asking about bathrooms, kitchen. And it's important to ask about the bathrooms and kitchen when they were last updated, how old the roof and the AC were. Because unless the bathrooms and kitchen are brand new and the AC is brand new and the AC is brand or the roof is brand new and AC is brand new, um, then, I mean, it may be outdated. Some people say it's excellent condition. It's fully renovated. And their time frame of a full renovation may be completely different. So this is out in the middle of nowhere, I guess. No, no picture. Sorry. Um, excellent condition, three, two and a half. Looking to downsize so he can retire. A lot of retirees here. Um, all right, cool. So let's call this person and see if they pick up the phone. Remember, don't ever run comps before you call. Run comps while it rings. There we go. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Two, Man. two, nine, All right. seven. Guys, let's do some Q&A before I get to the IG Live because I do expect to spend a, a, a few minutes on that IG Live. So let's go through. All right, cool. Let's scroll up. What's up, guys? I got a deal. I got a deal. I looked up at 164K. Hold on. I wonder who this is. I got a deal. I locked up at 164000 The owner owed that exactly in Baltimore. Couldn't wholesale it, and no one wants to sub too because that's foundation issues. Any tips? Well, some homeowners, uh, they'll sell it for exactly what they owe, and um, technically they're not really making anything, uh, but couldn't wholesale it, and nobody wants to sub too because foundation issues. So a sub two. I mean, if you're going to sub two because that's foundation issues, I don't know if that's, you know, it can't really be negotiated if it's at a price where he, even if he wanted to go lower, he can't go lower. Okay. But the thing is, are there any comp selling for higher? So what I like to do is I like locking up deals that are selling lower than what cash comps are selling for. I'm starting to get a little bit more aggressive with um, creative financing. Okay. Um, usually if that's foundation issues, it's not a deal breaker. There are cash buyers that is foundation important. Absolutely. But there are cash buyers that buy with sinkholes with, uh, you know, foundation in Baltimore. You don't really have sinkholes. That's more of a floor thing anyway. But, uh, my point is like, it could need some really rough work. And there's usually buyers out there. What I recommend for you to do, if you haven't done this already, Post in local real group or real estate investment group and don't post a deal. Post first is anybody in this group buy properties with foundation issues. Some people run away from it. Some people don't care. You know what I mean? But first I would find out, I would, you know, minimize the, the pool, like who buys with foundation issues because that is an expense, but each buyer has their own labor costs, uh, material costs, all that stuff. So I don't know what the comps are on it. Um, foundation issues aren't really a big hurdle. It just depends who's buying. So I would try to find people that buy foundation issues first, reverse engineer the process and do it that way. Hopefully that helps. Good morning from Cali. Good morning. Um, let's see. How do we send deals to you? You can send uh, deals to me. Shoot me a, a DM on IG. If you guys have a deal you'd like to JV on, shoot me uh, a DM on Instagram. Okay? I look through them every once in a while. Um, I try to keep the requests at zero. But shoot me a DM on IG. And, um, you know, what I will say, if you guys want to JV, me, JV with me on these deals, make sure you're direct to seller. Make sure you have some comps. 
you know, don't send me a lead. Say, hey, Stephen, can you take a look at this? Let me know if it's a deal and then I'll lock it up. You know, you could do that. Submit it on the deal desk. OK, but uh, make sure you direct to seller. Make sure it's not on the MLS. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I'll be like, hey, I don't agree with the price. I think you have to be closer to this. Go back and negotiate with the homeowner. OK, and then we could do it. Um, just want to put it that way. <clears throat> Let's see what the owner owes, what they're asking for. Foundation of cash, we're going to buy it. It makes sense. It really depends on the comps around. I'm Maryland. I have done deals. Literally block. Yeah, Maryland is very block by block. I mean, it's crazy. Like, you could think you have a great deal, and uh, it may not be a great deal. Um, Stephen, how do we get access to the course we bought on the toolbox site? I know it's older, but when I tried to log in, I didn't see the option to. So, actually, it's new at least the platform. So when you go to ritoolbox.com, um, it's a brand new platform. Now, if you guys bought a course for me a while back, you could shoot me a DM. This one is different. It's a different structure, different platform. And also there's going to be a lot of new content added. There's already are, is new content added. So it's new, essentially. It's not going to be the same one. Uh, but this one, I'm going to keep adding stuff to it. And there's going to be also some other goodies on there. Okay. Um, loving the content. Thank you. Creative finance can work on free and clear and properties that still have a mortgage. Um, you know, if you need some acquisition, try and reach this team. I took his action in class. Bam. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. My um, thank you for saying that the course does help. I'm not going to shove it down your throat. If you get it, great. Thank you for your support and supporting yourself. If you don't get it, you know it is what it is. Um, I think it's great. I'm going to keep the course updated. There's going to be a lot of new stuff on there. As uh, time comes along, I'll be creating a lot more content. Uh, you know, Just to give you a sneak peek, I'm also going to add there cold calling session. I'm going to add there uh, if you're going on in-person appointments or you have to, or maybe you have to send somebody out there, what does that look like from the approach to the rapport to the close? In-person is a much different conversation than over the phone. In-person is a lot more powerful, but it also requires you to, to be sharper, okay? Because now the person can see you and hear you, all right? So there's a few things that um, I would recommend you do and you don't do when it comes to that, Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to hop off here. Guys, hop on the IG Live. In five minutes, I'm going on IG Live with Keith and Elijah. You don't want to miss this. Make sure you guys hop on. I also have a special announcement of something brand new that I'm launching next month. Super excited. Um, I don't think anybody in the industry is going to be doing this, or at least they've attempted this and it hasn't worked. But this is this is – Amazing. I can't wait to share this with you guys. So I'll see you guys in five minutes. Have a great weekend. Hop over to IG, guys. I'll see you there. You don't want to miss it. Take care, guys.